Okay, let's get this party started. We're gonna get loud. Woo! In 2018, Doug Ford said that we wouldn't have to be on this lawn like we were with the Liberals. Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? And we're not going away until this number is a lot smaller. On that note, I'd like to call up Tara Stone and members of the Durham crew. Let's do this. Let's get this going. Welcome OAC, welcome to Queen's Park. The Ontario PCs may not want to face us, but we're going to make sure that they're going to hear us. Let them hear you. with us today and I know what it takes the coordination the planning for families and caregivers to get here and to stand with your community many of you have literally moved mountains to be here today to join us and that tells you how important it is that you're here with us today to stand with your community since February 2019 autism families across this province have lived in fear that their children may never receive the supports they require I know that my family's reality changed the day that Lisa McLeod made her now infamous announcement. And from that day forward, we've lived in a bubble of fear. This is not specific to my family, but to tens of thousands of families in Ontario and many of you who are here with us today. We're fast approaching five years from that announcement. Five years of time that our children will never get back. Five years of lost intervention, which we know how critical early intervention is to our children. Five years of trauma inflicted on our community. This government needs to be held accountable for that. Let them hear you. Shame. Shame. This government has forced parents to take the roles of therapists, clinicians, teachers, OTs, SLPs, rather than just being parents. It's clear that our children are not and will never be a priority for this Doug Ford government. Am I mad? You're damn right I'm mad. And I know everyone that's standing here today is just as mad. You all may have noticed a news article yesterday Headline stating, Ontario Autism Program now funding over 8,000 kids for core therapy. To the casual viewer, this may sound like something to celebrate, but we know the reality. That's not the case. One, uh, because our community is re relentless and we dig for the facts, one freedom of information request after another because we're dealing with a program that is marred in secrecy and has absolutely no transparency. More than 10,000 children were receiving needs-based therapy, real intensive behavioral therapy if needed, under the old OAP, before the Doug Ford-led government destroyed it. There were 23,000 children at that time waiting for service. Now, what do we have? 8,700 children whose families have been, who have signed a funding agreement for core services. Notice the words used as the attention is always in the details. Signed doesn't mean funding received or that families are able to access services. Don't forget the service capacity that it had taken decades to build was toppled within mere months. The wait list has now grown to over 60,000 children. It's a staggering number, absolutely staggering. The government intentionally, quietly froze the wait list, let's not forget, and had expected us to accept some iPads and insulting one-time payments. And we said no. And today we say no again. We say no to years-long wait lists for initial diagnosis and the fact that females are typically diagnosed later, which puts them, at, puts them at a further disadvantage. This in itself creates a barrier to service and contributes to the fact that tens of thousands will age out, age out of the pro 
program without ever being offered service. Needs-based therapy. We say no to the fact that two-thirds of those on the current wait list may never receive core services. Shame! Those families that are lucky enough to get a determination of needs meeting are then put through a traumatic experience of hoping that they're able to articulate their child's needs to qualify for adequate service. Not just qualify, but to essentially receive supports and an adequate intensity. It is not clinicians speaking to our children's needs, but us, parents. They've created a discriminatory program based on age caps. Do not stand for that. To me, this one is key. This is what makes this program anything but needs-based. Just because today's minister uses the words needs-based does not make it so. Do not be fooled. I say today's minister, as we've had four ministers so far, so far overseeing this portfolio under the Ford government. Four ministers. This in itself shows how little importance they put on this portfolio, how little they care about those they should be serving. Clever. This, uh, uh, they think little of those in our community, those on ODSB and our most vulnerable, vulnerable segments of society. They underestimate underestimated our community before, but here we are. Let them hear you, OAC. Yeah. Those age caps and funding caps mean children with high support needs will face even greater barriers at a much higher rate. Ask a legacy family what these mean. What this means in regards to what is independently clinically prescribed versus what is provided by this current program. Remember, it's not Nate's needs-based, regardless of how many times they tell you it is. Access to autism supports are worth fighting for, and more importantly, so is our children's chances at an independent future. That is what is at stake. <laughs> Keep holding this government to account. Keep on those social media campaigns. Keep demanding program transparency from your local MPP. Meet a member from the press today, or maybe one from your no local news outlet when you get home. You would be surprised at how willing the press is to share your story. Stand strong as a community, together, and remember, our families will be here long after the Ford government has left the halls of the legislative building behind us. All right, that was uh, amazing. Thank you, Durham Crew. Woo! Speaking of these uh, age caps, the government put together a working group. Do you think they recommended age caps? No. What do they recommend? Needs-based therapy. What did we get? Age caps. What do we want? Needs-based therapy. What did we get? Age caps. What do we want? Needs-based therapy. What do we get? What do we need? Needs-based therapy. Woo! Okay. Up next, Jody. She's a director for the Ontario Autism Coalition. She was a huge part in getting all of this organized, and uh, she's about to uh, knock your socks off. Hello. So as Tony said, I'm Jody. I'm a director here with the OAC, and I'm autistic, and I have two autistic children. So firstly, thank you for being here today. We all needed to be here together to ensure this government knows that we have not gone away. So thank you. Thank you for finding time, for carving time, and for representing for those in our community who could not be here today. Each of you holds a spot for thousands of families that are all facing the same collective barriers, whether your loved one is little, a teen, or an adult. After my boys were diagnosed with autism, I found the incomparable Carrie Monaghan, 
And then I found the OAC. And then I learned how hard this community has been fighting and how long they've been fighting for. When I first joined the OEC, I saw their advocacy wins. I learned that they stomped on Autism Doesn't End at Five, and I helped them stomp on the childhood budget and forced this government to commit to a needs-based program. Those were obvious wins. Now that I'm on the inside of the OEC, I see all the wins our community can't always quantify. The media interest, financial donations to support our work, meetings with ministers, MPPs, staffers, unions, school boards, the emails and follow-up emails, the tight-lipped connections, and the vast amount of information our incredible working groups have been able to collect because of you, our community, because you open up to us and share your stories. Those are all wins too. It's what propels us forward. It's why I'm here, because that work is so meaningful. My autism diagnosis later in life has given me a lot of my own power back. And I'm slowly figuring out what supports and accommodations I need to make it through my days. Severe and profound autism does not impact my family directly, but I quickly recognized where my advocacy efforts need to lean. And that's in the direction to require supports and services for those autistics and their families. I do not directly represent the adults in our community who require the most support. I recognize that my needs are not obvious. What I do know is that our adult community and their families are in crisis. They've been in crisis for a long, long time. Much of our own work and what the media public interest can solely be focused on are kids. But we all know that our kids will be adults one day. I was going over programming with my son's therapist and she was showing me his visual of a conversation train. I found myself learning about conversations. This lesson was actually really beneficial to me. I learned about adding to a caboose and where you might be going off track and how to change to a connecting track in a fluid way, etc. My husband and I giggled that night as I told him about it. But as I said earlier, I always try to find space for those more effective than me. And I have to consider all of the autistic adults who require continued therapies after 18 years old, who need appropriate services, a livable income, supportive housing, employment opportunities, whose families need more support, and all the things so many of the children we are fighting for now will need one day. The OAC has a working group to focus on adult services. The laborous work needed to be, oh sorry, the laborous work needed to obtain meaningful supports and services should have been put in yesterday. And we need those who have some time to work with us to find the ask and solutions to the issues those in our community face. Because we all know that autism doesn't end when you grow old, when you grow up in high school, in grade school, or in preschool. Autism is lifelong. On that note, does autism end at five? Does it end at eight? Does it end at 10? No. Autism is lifelong. I autism is lifelong. Let's let them hear it inside there. Autism is lifelong. Autism is lifelong. Autism is lifelong. I think uh, I think since they can probably hear us in there, I think we should ask them to come outside. What do you guys think? But let's let him hear it. Ready? Come outside! 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 Lovely Kate, Vice President of the Ontario Autism Coalition.
just an awesome person all around. Thank you. I think everyone would agree, Tony's pretty awesome too. Um, I am, right? um, as Tony said, my name is Kate Dudley Loke. Um, I am the co chair of the Education Committee um, with the Ontario Autism Coalition. And we talk a lot, and we already have today, here about the problems with the Ontario Autism Program. We hear less about the problems that are happening in our schools. And I, that's problematic in itself, I think, because there is a clear relation between what is happening with the Ontario Autism Program and what it now looks like in our schools. Do you think it looks good in our schools right now? No! Are, are your kids getting supported? No! kids, maybe more, we don't know because they're not telling us how many, but when you take 60,000 kids and don't give them the clinical supports that they need, where do they go? They get thrown into schools, don't they? Have extra supports been given in schools to accommodate the extra needs that are now required? No, they haven't. It's a problem. It's a problem for a lot of us. If your kid has a good situation in school right now, consider yourself lucky and you hold on to that. Because what's happening in our schools right now is not good. Yep. We actually have a lot of education workers here today and we Woo! welcome them. They Woo! support us. We love that they come and support us. It's really important and we support them. Last fall, we stood with them and we supported them. They deserve so much more than they're getting. Yep. It's so true. So when 60,000 kids don't get the therapy they need, they don't get the chance to develop better communication skills, better self-regulation skills, the ability to follow the routines that are required to get through a school day. Simple things that a lot of other families may take for granted, like toileting or being able to feed themselves or wash their hands when they're around all the kids with all the germs. These kind of things don't always come naturally to our kids, and they need the support to get through that. The support isn't coming from therapy, so they're starting school at a huge deficit. And the schools are not equipped to handle these, these extra needs. So kids are arriving in schools without the tools they need, and the schools are having staffing challenges and yes. our kids are paying the price for that. Yes. I just want to say to the education workers are, that are here today that we see you. We always see you. Thank we you. see you. We do. Woo. We want to thank you for not just showing up here today, but for showing up for us almost every day at school. We know you're doing everything that you can to make the situation better for our kids at school. We see you taking hits and kicks and bites. We know that's not what you signed up for. We know that you do everything possible to, to, to make it so that our kids don't get to that level. But there's not enough of you to keep everything at bay. We see you running from fire to fire, desperately trying to keep things under control. We see you being yelled at and cursed at. And I will say that more than anything this year, I see it on your faces more than ever before. We are a month and a half into the school year and you are burnt out. You are having a hard time getting yourself to work every day. It is hard. Last year and even more so this year, like I said, we see the conflict that is arising between school resources lessening while the amount of kids sitting stuck on a wait list is growing every single month. We know it is shameful. What's scary about this is something bad is going to happen. And we know someone is going to get hurt one day. We hear the stories. We hear the stories of kids eloping from schools. We hear the stories of kids being bullied. We hear the stories of kids being so dysregulated that furniture is being thrown. Someone is going to get gravely hurt or worse. And who, are, who is going to be to blame for that? It's not going to be the educators. It's going to be these guys in here. They know these things are happening, and yet they refuse to address it. And these are just safety 
issues I'm talking about. There's the other side of the coin, or the other side of the spectrum, if you will. How many of your kids may not deal with safety concerns, but need support to access a curriculum at school? Are your kids getting that support? No! Do you remember a day when an educational assistant was hired to assist the children with their education needs? That's what should be happening, right? There are many kids who may not be a safety concern, but in order for them to actually succeed and learn at school, they need somebody to be helping them. And right now, we all know this here, EAs are basically security guards at school. That's what's happening in the vast majority of the time. Our kids are being failed by this government. They are not funding special education appropriately in this province, and we know it, they know it. We all know it. So, what happens when they're unable to actually support the kids safely and it gets to like a serious issue? What do we see happening? What, what happens, parents? Does your phone ring during the day? Do you get a call saying, Tommy's having a really hard time today. We can't seem to get him under control. You're gonna have to come pick him up. Oh yes, we know you picked him up yesterday too, but you'll have to pick him up today and likely tomorrow. These are called exclusions, and they're happening ra rampantly across the province right now. Stephen Lachier, not only does he not want to address exclusions or find a way to make them happen less, but he doesn't even want to monitor them. We spent last year trying to get him to just mandate that data is collected on how often these exclusions are happening, and they're basically refusing to do that. They, 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 they're claiming they are doing it, but freedom of information reports are showing otherwise. That data is not being collected, and I guess that they can just sit inside and pretend that it's not happening, right? We're not, we're not collecting data on this, it doesn't happen, but we know it's happening, we know it's a problem. Our kids have the right to be in school. Yes. They have the right to be in school safely. They have a right to be in school meaningfully. It's not enough for them to make it to school every day. They have a right to an education. This government has created a crisis for our community and special education is under attack. Kids and education workers are paying the price for it all, and enough is enough. Our kids deserve better. Enough is enough. Our kids deserve better. Our kids have a right to an education, and our families should be able to send our kids to school every day without worrying. How many of you send your kids off in the morning and sit at home or at work and worry? It's too much. This government needs to invest in our kids, and they can start by investing in education workers. We need more of them. We need them to be trained appropriately. We need them to be safe in the workplace. As a very smart woman that works also for the OAC once said, what did she say? <laughs> Education workers' working conditions are our kids' learning conditions. Yes. We need to work together with them and stand up and say enough is enough. I'm going to finish off here right now by asking every single one of you to continue staying loud. We need to tell our stories. When our kids are being failed at school, when our kids are being left in dangerous situations at school, we cannot be quiet about it. We need to let everybody know that it's happening. Because in there, they want to pretend it isn't happening. I'm also going to ask education workers to, to continue telling their stories. Their stories are just as important as ours. Because they see it themselves every day. And a lot of our kids, let's face it, do not have the voice to come home and tell us what's happening. So we need education workers to continue being loud and proud. They do a pretty good job of it already. 
Together, we need to demand better, and that starts here today. Thank you all so much, and let's keep going and be loud. Kate is 100% right. Disabled children deserve to have the same education as their peers. And in order to have this, we need them to properly fund education. But we also need to stand with our education workers. Um, like Kate said, their working conditions are our children's um, learning conditions. So what do we need the government to do? Fund education. What do we need them to do? Fund education. What do we need them to do? Jay, do you hear that? Fun education! Fun education! Fun education! Fun education! Fun education! Woo! Okay, I want to introduce somebody very special. He's uh, making his way up here. The one, the only, Bruce McIntosh! Good morning, OAC. Hi, Bruce. Thank you for coming. Here we are again. I think I've lost count of the number of times we've had to do this. I am not getting tired. I will not stop, and I know that you won't either. Am I right? We're gonna get therapy for our kids, and we're not gonna let these guys keep... I'm not gonna sugarcoat. They're lying. They are lying over and over and over. Do you remember Clear the Wait List? Remember that five years ago? It's tripled! They lie! They tell us that they've got 40,000 kids served. Bullshit! I told you I wouldn't sugarcoat it! Because the thing that our kids need is actual therapy. Transition to school programs when you haven't had actual therapy isn't a good transition. Parent training, when the kid isn't getting therapy, isn't what the parents need. So, how does this come about? Well, there are people who provide these alterations of the truth, fabrications. They're called bureaucrats. And I'd like to tell you about one of them. You know who I'm talking about. So here's the thing. You got you, you guys, yeah, yeah. So there's a um, there's a a hierarchy in the bureaucracy. You know, there's a deputy minister who's the lead bureaucrat in the ministry, and then there are assistant deputy ministers each of whom has a, a responsibility for some program. You know, there's one that looks after child welfare, there's one that looks after youth justice. Well, there's one that's responsible for the Ontario Autism Program. And her name is Jennifer Morris. And she has signed off on and taken charge of implementing every single thing that this government has done or not done to fail our children for the last five years. Got a simple message for the guys inside. Fire Jennifer Morris! Come on, guys! Fire Jennifer Morris! Fire Jennifer Morris! Fire Jennifer Morris! Fire Jennifer Morris! this man. 
So, here's why. I know you guys have cell phones. You have cell phones so that, you know, the school can reach you and tell you you gotta come and pick up your kid. They, you got cell phones to, you know, hopefully wait for the call that's gonna come from the OAP and tell you your kid's got funding. Your, your, your battery's gonna go low before that comes. But here's something I'd like you to do. Pull them out, pull them out, get them in your hand, right in front. Launch your phone now and get the keypad, please. People ready? I want to give you Jennifer's phone number. 416-325-7055. Well, that's not a mobile, that's her desk phone, so you can't text her. But you can phone her. 416-325-7055. I'd love you to call her right now, but you know that might cause an issue for her voicemail system. Voice Doesn't bother me, but it might bother. Okay, so do it. Do it. Tony's doing it. Call him up. They, you know, I'd love her to get sixty thousand phone calls. And you, I, I, even that's a lie, guys. Even that's a lie. Because they haven't given us an update since December. It's probably close to 70,000 now. But, you know, if, if you can't lie about it, just cover it up. Shame on you. Shame on you, Doug Ford. So you hang on to that number, and if you can't get through right now, you just, you know, let her know maybe later this morning when you hear a voice message. Just let her know how you feel and what you think and where you think she should go. Now, thank you for that. There's always a spot at a rock concert where the lead singer um, introduces the band, right? And there are some people who have moved heaven and earth to make this event happen. And I would really love for you all to give them a round of applause. I apologize to anybody in advance if I forget your name, but there have been so many. Tony Stravato, give it up! Our lovely and talented President Alina Cameron, give it up! Vice President Dave Logue, I've lost track of you, honey, but she rocks it. Rhonda Allaby Glass, who stepped in yesterday afternoon when we had a bus captain who couldn't come. We got Leah Cockmerick, who, she's done everything. She's done marshals, she did buses, she's a rock star. We got Jody Craig. We got that fellow in the orange vest there, Jay Lerner. He's our secretary treasurer. I have made his life hell over the last four weeks, but he has come up strong every single time. Tracy Chong, who's been looking after media this morning. She's a rock star. There's Miko's Ben Speck, and he's the dude. He is the dude, and the dude abides. <laughs> so thank you for your time. Don't forget to call my friend Jennifer. And remember, if you put that number in your phone book, you, know, you, you could do it more than once. Because some of your kids are gonna be waiting for five to seven years. You can phone her a lot of times in five to seven years, okay? Well, you know, until it's disconnected and that can't happen soon enough. So listen, thank you everyone for coming. Oh, the last round of applause. I almost forgot, shame on me. The real rock stars in this are each and every one of you and the 21,000 other members of the OAC across the great province. So a big round of applause for you guys. Thank you. Let's hear it for the man, Bruce. down the street I can pretty much see the building so I think we need one more round of fire Jennifer Morris for me please so ready on a count of three 
One, two, three. Fire Jennifer Morris! 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 Woo! Okay. We have a very special guest coming up. Uh, many of you would know her from uh, being a rock star uh, last year when we almost shut this province down. It was very close. The one and only Laura Walton. Woo! Well, good morning. So, you know, listen, I have been working alongside yourselves and your kids for decades. And I have been standing on this lawn for just as long, screaming at governments to pay attention to our kids. And every single time I hear really nicely crafted statements, I hear a lot of promises, I see a lot of pictures being taken, but let's be clear, statements and promises are not support. member of the education committee with the OAC and you know education workers we live to work with your kids we know that we weren't going to get rich becoming an EA we do it because we love the work that we do and we will continue to do that work that we do because there is nothing more rewarding than seeing your kids succeed but we've got a government in there who doesn't want your kids to succeed. We have a government in there with Mr. You know, I call him the temper tantrum in tight jeans, but you know, as Kate said, it's the tight jeans with an even tighter budget. And this man will tell you that he has hired 2,000 new frontline education workers. I'm gonna ask you, have you seen them? As a matter of fact, I'm starting to think that they are the same people as the public health nurses that he claimed that he put in during the pandemic. So here's what I'm going to ask. I need you to stay loud. I know that you are tired. I know that you are being tested. I know that this government makes you consider whether you want to stay in the province of Ontario. And I need you to dig deep. Because here's what I know. You, you have the power. The power of the people is always going to be stronger than the people in power. And I'm gonna ask you another favor. Unfortunately, in today's day and age, if education workers tell their story, they are threatened with discipline and being fired. When they reach out to say, this isn't okay, they are threatened with the job that they love. They are told by people to not report incidents, because reporting incidents would reveal what we all know. There's not enough support. I need you to lift up those stories. Get them anonymously. Share them. Share them in their spaces, but protect those education workers. They are tired, but we're not going to stop because your kids are our kids and we are not going to back down. Thank you.
got an, an oldie but a goodie. Because um, honestly, I'm tired of dealing with Doug Ford and his government. Um, I'm hoping that in a couple years we won't have to, but for now, let's just do a, an old school chant. Hey, hey, ho, ho, Doug Ford has to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, Doug Ford has to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, Doug Ford has to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, Doug Ford has to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, Doug Ford has to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, Doug Ford has to go. Hey, hey, ho, ho, Doug Ford has to go. Okay. I'd like to introduce Yolanda McLean from QB. She's the Secretary Treasurer for Ontario. I didn't hear you! Hey, hey! Ho, ho! Doug Ford has got to go! Hey, hey! Ho, ho! Doug Ford has got to go! Hey, hey! Ho, ho! Doug Ford has got to go! Hey, hey! Ho, ho! Doug Ford has got to go! I think they can hear you now. Do you think they can hear you? I am so happy to be here with you today at this very important event on the lawn of Queen's Park leading up to your lobby day tomorrow. The importance of funding core services with children with autism. This number in here does it up front, it boggles my mind. At this time in our province, the fact that there are 60,000 children on the wait list with a number of steadily growing each month is totally unacceptable. With only a third children accepted to be able to receive core services that are so imperative to their development when we hear that early intervention is the most important thing to ensure that they reach their full developmental potential. And then we see that at least two-thirds of children are sitting on wait lists for almost up to seven years. This is completely outrageous. A pending a program that is in place by the former Liberal government to support families and children with autism, and then the Conservatives replacing it with another program and then another program, and then set us back five years. And now finally, be back where we are five years ago, forcing parents to become financially ruined to get the therapy that they need for their children, it definitely is not working. Providing interim one-time funding, 5,000 to 20,000 depending on their age, simply is not enough. Especially when we know that intensive therapy for children with higher needs can be up to $90,000 a year. Okay, try to take $90,000 out of your pocket, see how that works for us. We can do better, they can do even more better. That is not an option. We are so proud to represent people with support, that support our children and your children in schools and communities. QP members are a critical part of the publicly funded core services that need to be available to you, the families. Not just you here on the lawn of Queen's Park, but just so you know, there's another rally help happening simultaneously today in Thunder Bay. And the failure of the Conservatives to provide the services to these families, they hurt our communities, the most vulnerable among us, particularly as well as the impacting of our jobs, of our, some of our QP members who are here today, like our social services, who provide support through community agencies, and our school board workers, as Laura just talked about, who provide support for families of children with autism. Our children deserve better. Our children deserve more. QP might just, I, we just talked about our social services and our education departments, but I want you to know, across the province, 280,000 QP members have your back. And we are supporting this rally today to send a message to the government to fix the program.
program. And that we stand in solidarity with parents who are demanding better and who deserve better for their kids. So, 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 solidarity. So, 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 solidarity. So, 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 solidarity. So, 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 solidarity. Thank you, everyone. We have some awesome advocates that are going to just come up and join me and we're going to say a few chants, we're going to say a few words. Uh, members of the Ottawa crew, everybody from Ottawa, the Ottawa crew, get up here. Let's go! While they're uh, coming up, let's get the chant needs-based therapy going just a bit. Ready? What do we want? What do we got? That's right. Introducing Rhonda and the Ottawa crew. I don't know if any of you guys remember uh, the start of this whole mess. Uh, Lisa McLeod was responsible. And she said 23,000 children languishing on the wait list was unacceptable. Unconscionable. I'm oh, sorry, unconscionable. How could I miss that up? Uh, what are we at now? 60? So, Lisa, we've tripled it. This is Lisa's legacy. And on Fridays, when she's supposed to be meeting with constituents, she's more interested in traveling around with her buddy Daryl to do barbecues with him. Or podcasts. That's her new thing. I don't know, I thought on Friday she was supposed to meet with constituents. and families for years. Shame. For the parents of an autistic child, you should still have rights to be heard by your MVP. Lisa, you represent everyone. Remember that. Here. So welcome, Sophie. So, Sonia. Hi, everyone. Um, this is totally off the cuff, so bear with me. Um, I'm here um, not only for my son. My son's name is Travis. He's here on my poster. He was a late diagnosis. It took us two years due to wait lists to get him diagnosed, and he was diagnosed at seven. He just had his 12th birthday, and we're still waiting. We're still waiting for a welcome call. We're still waiting for a dawn call. We're waiting for the red tape to find us and tape us to this OAP program that is broken and it's not working. I've been fighting on my own. I've been fighting with the OAC. I've been fighting with all of you. I have spoken with MPPs, some of them, mine's Lisa. I have spoken, I have gone into Queen's Park. I have listened to question period. They are not listening, they're not talking, and we're not going to stop until they do. My son is in danger of aging out of this so-called program. My son is 12 years old. We're still waiting at least another two to three years before he can get funding for services that I can't provide for him anymore. Yeah, shame. My son is in danger of aging out. Your children are in danger of missing opportunities that they could be afforded if they had the therapy and the funding that they need. We will not stop, we will keep going. Stay strong, join us, join our groups. Keep talking with each other and stay loud. Thank you so much. Um, I'm not really sure who's next, Tony. 
<laughs> How's everybody doing? There's water in two locations over here, if anybody's thirsty. Right under this flag over here, there's a green uh, milk crate, and then there's a little tin can here by the uh, light post. My back is You know, we've had four different ministers on this on this file, right? And four ministers keep telling us the same talk. How much impact have those four ministers had on this program? Zero! How much impact? Zero impact! How much? Zero impact! What do we need them to do? Get to work! 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 We're going to take a two minute break, we're going to get some music going, everybody have a drink of water, and we're going to get things fired right back up. Clara and friends. Hello everybody. I'm back. Okay, I didn't have anything prepared, so bear with me. Um, in the car on the way here, I was thinking just about how long it's been that we've been fighting this fight. I made my first speech on this lawn when I was two weeks shy of 14. I'm now 21 and a half. I've been through all of high school, a victory lap, a gap year, and there was kind of the global pandemic in the middle there, and we're still here. If the amount of time that's passed makes you mad, then when you think about the number of kids that have been waiting for that long, and, sure. and in some cases they don't really know why they're waiting. They don't really understand what is happening and why it's happening. It's just, I'm, I hate to use the same word as Lisa McLeod, but it is unconscionable. I have no hope left for this government, if I'm being brutally honest. I, I don't think they're going to give us what we want. I just don't think it's going to happen. All I can do, all I can do is pray that something or someone knocks some sense into them and we will at least get something done before they're out of office. Bring on the next Oh my gosh, okay. I wanna close off just to say thank you to all of you for being here, for fighting this fight for as long as you have, no matter how long that is, whether it's five years or 10 or 15 or 20, thank you. I see you, I know you're working hard. I know it's not easy, I know it doesn't get any easier, but the one thing that we have that we can hold on to is this is each other and I think we can all agree that what we're going through sucks but it would suck a lot more if we were going through it alone so let's just lean into our community because we've known from day one that that's where the power comes from and that's how we really get things done so thank you That's why we're here, right? Okay, so our past president, Angela Brandt, is going to say a few words. Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here today. I know you don't want to be, but thank you anyway. Um, I wasn't prepared to come up here at all, so I don't know what I'm going to say, but. Um, my son just turned 18 and I've been fighting since his diagnosis at 18 months. The fact that I've been fighting 
now, to, since he was a child, since a baby, to, and I continue fighting now that he's technically an adult, it breaks my heart, and it breaks my heart for this new generation. Um, I took an Uber here today, uh, because I brought signs, not because, you know, other reasons. And uh, the cab driver, he said to me, oh, I'm so glad you're going. I wish I could go, but I can't, I'm working. I have four children and my third one has autism. I just moved here to Ontario eight or nine months ago and I think I've made a wrong decision. He's like, I just came from Saskatoon. I thought there would be greater opportunity here. I feel like I've made a grave error. I registered my son for the OAP. There's nothing here. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to provide for my children. And it broke my heart. It ga I gave him a few phone numbers to call, a few agencies, made sure that he registered with the OAP. But deep down in my heart, I know he's not going to see anything for years to come. And the fact that uh, there are fewer children receiving services now than there were five years ago when this government destroyed the old OAP is mind-boggling. How does that make sense? How does this government think it's a good idea to destroy something without having anything in place? And five years later, they're still saying that they have a program. The program that they put in place isn't at all what they promised. And it should have been here four and a half years ago. I don't, I was speaking to a few politicians and I'm so glad we got the chant going for fire Jennifer Morris because the bureaucrats are running the show here and we need to let this government know that we are the people and they need to represent us and our children. Our children matter. Every child is deserving. You know, uh, I was accused of being um, a leftist or whatever, you know, that I'm against the PC government and that's why I'm so critical. And my comment back has always been, there is no right or left when it comes to autism or developmental services or education. There is only right and wrong. And this government is wrong. And that's, that's all I have to say, you know, I have a new, we have a new generation of advocates and I want to applaud you guys. Thank you so much. And I just, I just hope that our voices get heard today. Yeah, thank you so much, everybody. Okay, it's come to my attention that uh, we put out meeting requests for tomorrow. We're having a lobby day, and uh, Stephen Lecce's office um, informed us that he is busy after question period, and he may be able to make some time for us in the morning. So, no, I think we're going to do something a little different, and we're going to, instead of using words, I'm going to do, I'm going to try my best uh, chicken um, sound, and if everybody can follow me and... <laughs> Stephen Lecce. <laughs> Stephen Lecce. <laughs> Stephen Lecce. <laughs> Stephen Lecce is a chicken. Meet with our education group. They are very smart people. They have great solutions. Don't be afraid of us. Don't run from us. Meet with us. I don't know about, have you guys ever emailed your MPP? I have, have you? Do you get those copy and paste replies? What do we need these people to do? They need to work for us. They need to step it up. Step Step in up! Step in up! 
It's, it's time for our MVPs to do their jobs, what they were elected for, and actually listen to us. We come to them with solutions. Not, we're not just there complaining at their offices. We have solutions. Uh, we're forced to be out here because our MPPs won't let us in their offices. So, on that note, we have a uh, special guest, Ryan. He's going to tell his story today. How's everybody doing? I am not happy to be here. I can't afford to be here, and neither can any of you. We have jobs, and our job is not to stand on this lawn and ask this government to do their job, to do what they promised to do. We had a hard day yesterday, and I know all of you have hard days with your kids as well. My son Vincent isn't totally verbal. He had one of his meltdown days yesterday. We all know what that's like. And the thing about Vincent is he is such a sweet kid and he's naive, but everybody seems to just love him. And he is so lucky to have parents like myself and my wife, just like your kids are lucky to have parents like all of you that even when we're dead tired, when they keep us up all night because they won't go to sleep, we keep going. We keep going. I call these kids the forgotten kids of COVID because everyone forgot them when the world shut down. And we were just expected to keep going. So we did. Each and every one of you became your entire, your, your kid's entire medical system. You were their doctor, you were their speech pathologist, you were their occupational therapist, you were everything to them. And we've received no funding since then, so we have to keep going. Now, I'm getting really tired of doing everybody else's job for them just like all of you are. Let me ask you, whenever you try to get your child into any program that will help them, it's always a fight, isn't it? I'm tired of fighting. And I'm tired of fighting against our own government that is supposed to serve us. It does not go the other way. We are not supposed to wait for the government. They are supposed to wait for us. And they are supposed to give us what we need. And these kids, these kids need help and they need it now. And the last thing I'll say is that they keep saying, well, there's no funding, there's no funding. Well, you know what? We spent how many years as occupational therapists? How many years as speech pathologists? How many years as their doctors? I think it's time for the parents to send the government the bill for the, for the time being. Thank you very much, and uh, let's give it to the government. Okay, looks like question period's over. Uh, we have our first MPP, the leader of the Green Party, Mike Schreiner. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I can deliver that invoice to the government for you. Thank you all for being here today, but I want to be absolutely clear. You should not have to be here. Doug Ford promised that parents would never have to protest at Queen's Park to get services for children with autism, and he lied. He promised that he would end the wait list, and he lied. He, fought, he promised he would fix the OAP, and he lied. And who pays the price for it? Our kids, your kids. Let's be absolutely clear. 
We need a government that cares. That cares about our kids, cares about our families, and ensures that we have a fully funded Ontario Autism Program that provides rapid and quick service for every child, regardless of age, and that is needs-based. So every child gets the care they deserve when they need it, and when you need the support to have a government that has your back. It is shameful. It is shameful that under this government, the wait list has tripled to now 60,000 children waiting to receive services. That's 60,000 families struggling to get the care their children need. It's 60,000 people struggling to figure out how they're gonna pay the bills and take care of their kids and meet all the other needs they have. It's shameful. It's shameful that in this province right now, fewer people are actually accessing services than when Doug Ford was elected five years ago. And for the media here, I just wanna say that those are lives. Imagine, imagine your child is diagnosed with autism and you know that rapid access to care and services and therapies is what is needed. That early intervention has the best results. And then you wait, and you wait, and you wait to be able to access the program. That is wrong. That's not the kind of Ontario I want to live in. And that's why Ontario Greens will continue to stand with you for a fully funded autism program that's needs-based, that has no age limits, and ensures that everyone in this province has access to the care they need now. Not five years from now, now, now. Thank you everyone for being here. You can always reach out to my office for the support you need. And thank you to those parents who have been fighting for so many years. You shouldn't have to be here. We're gonna be working with you to ensure that you don't have to come back here to get the care your children deserve. Thank you all for being here today. Just waiting on the, the rest of them to come outside. So let's just tell them to come outside. Come outside! 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 Oh, by the way, I want to mention this is for all the PCs. We know the other people are coming outside. This is for the PC party. Come outside! Come outside! Come outside! Come outside! Come outside! Come outside! I don't know if you guys know, but apparently Doug Ford is a what, Bruce? A liar! He's a Doug liar. Ford is a what? This is Kate, and she works really closely with our education. She's the chair of the co-chair of the education working group, and she has made this awesome sign. She 
Rhonda made it, but she's representing. And it says, I am laser focused on keeping autistic kids out of the classroom. Shame! Shame! Fire Leche! Leche must resign. How many years has he been the education minister? And we're still here fighting for the same things over and over again. And they won't even meet with our education group. I'm going to do the, another round of my chicken sound just because it was so cool. But if everybody can just come along with me one more time. Anybody home? <laughs> Doug Ford, are you home? <laughs> okay, we're gonna do a little interactive no, dance now. Um, just because we need to stretch out, stay warm. It's coming right up. I'd like to introduce the independent candidate, Bobby Ann. Good afternoon. I am Ontario's independent MPP, Bobby Ann Brady, and I come from the riding of Haldeman, Norfolk. I want to take a moment to thank you all for being here today, taking time out of your busy week to let this government know that the autism file is not being managed or working the way it should. Five years ago, Ontario's autism program was facing, facing major issues that had been evident for decades. The autism program was underfunded. It had a long wait list, and the program did not provide the much needed range of clinical services. Further, we had a wait list that was not moving the way it should. Over the past several years, I have heard this time and time again as a Queen's Park staffer, and I continue to hear it as a Queen's Park politician. If we rewind to 2018, Premier Ford was angered over the wait list of 23,000 children. And now, all these years later, that wait list sits at around 60,000 children hanging on, waiting for supports and services. The Premier must be absolutely beside himself these days. We all know families who are living with the challenges associated with autism. And I don't have to look any further than my very own office. One of my staff has two children with autism. In her own words, both girls are so very different. One is carefree and easygoing, where the other one is constantly stressed out and deals with anxiety daily. Both girls have their limitations and have never been able to relate with peers of the same age. One is now 24 and has her first job, but does not deal with the public. Instead, she buses tables, wipes them down, changes the garbage bins at a local Tim Hortons. Her other daughter just graduated from high school and will be seeking help from the Livingston Center in Tilsonburg to find employment. As Tina says, the journey has been tough for her daughters and it hasn't been easy on the family, but she does know it could be far worse and counts her blessings. She understands that while she is in a challenging situation, there are those of you with children with autism who are faced with greater challenges and you need help and you need it fast. I'll reiterate for the record, the current program's budget is $667 million, which only gives 20,000 children the therapies they need. 20,000 out of 60,000 children and growing who need help. That's just a third. Just a third. Any athlete will tell you third place is not good enough. And third place is not good enough for Ontarians waiting for autism supports and services. And as I said, the roster grows by 7,000 every year. That's another 7,000 children and their families waiting for help, and it just continues to grow. It's not good enough. The government has provided families two rounds of one-off funding ranging from 5,000 to 22,000 based on the child's age. But as we know, folks who registered for the OAP after March 31st, 2021 have not received any of that funding. And I'm told the price of behavioral therapy ranges from $80,000 to $90,000 a year. 
The ministry is allegedly observing the levels of need and how families are targeting where to wisely spend their funding allocations, which should give them an idea on where things stand. But we all know this isn't just about money. We should also be scrutinizing how the program is executed. Is it spinning its wheels or is it working properly? And we all know the program is spinning its wheels. And I think there's too many government stakeholders who are working in silos. Just a few weeks ago, I met with a young family whose young boy, Tucker, was diagnosed before turning two. The family was thrilled with an early diagnosis because they believed early intervention was important to receiving the necessary help for Tucker. The key word there is believed. In fact, core services funding for Tucker is a six year wait. Unfortunately, Tucker's family has been left frustrated and exhausted, just like all of you. And many of the supports for Tucker, including meeting with his occupational therapist, are being carried out online. How does a toddler make emotional and personal connections via Zoom? It's impossible. As Tucker's dad told me, what I'm getting for my boy is a waste of taxpayers' dollars. I've always been a firm believer that parents know what's best for their children. Right now, the autism file proves that this government does not have a handle on what's best for your children. If the government can't provide the necessary services to help you, to help the beautiful Tuckers of this province, then perhaps it's time to get out of your way and allow you to secure the services that best work for you, your child, and your family. I want to thank you all for allowing me to come out here today and speak with you. And as, as Mr. Schreiner, as MPP Schreiner said, my office is always, always available to listen, to lend a helping uh, hand, and uh, please continue to keep the pressure on this government because we must, we must provide all the necessary supports and services. We have to work together for all the Tuckers of Ontario. Thank you very much. I know we have some MPPs out there from the NDP. How about you join me up here? And I know uh, a bunch were out here earlier, uh, you know, as you can imagine, there's so many responsibilities uh, going on inside right now, uh, but I can wholeheartedly assure you, all New Democrats are with you. All New Democrats have been with you for decades. 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 I mean, even before Andrea was the leader, she was your critic for children's services and she was fighting autism back then. This fight has gone on much too long. Way too long. I have stood with you since 2011. That's 12 years. 12 years you and I have been hugging, crying, holding hands, fighting. Fighting governments that just are not listening. In 2018, under the last regime, we thought that we had a program. It wasn't perfect, but we fought hard together to get a needs-based program. You did that. People who stood here before you did that. And then we got this. We have Doug Ford, who promised you, he promised you that no would have to stand where you're standing today. He promised you that no parent, no child would go without services in this province. And he gave us Minister Lisa McLeod. And we know what she did. She burned it down, you are right. Burned it to the ground. Burn the witch! So she didn't last because of you. You said you weren't taking it. Get her out. She had to go and she was gone. Then we got Todd Smith. 
Todd was going to come in and fix everything. Everything was going to be better. Do nothing, Todd. Did nothing. And then we got Mary Lee Fullerton. Now I'll tell you, days in the legislature with Mary Lee Fullerton were no fun. Mary Lee Fullerton did nothing. She made it worse. Ghosted us, had no idea, could do nothing except read a note that some probably 20-year-old staffer had put in front of her. And now we have Michael Parsa. Mr. Nice Guy. Mr. Nice Guy is going to fix it. He's going to meet with everyone. He's going to be everybody's best friend. And they're done that. I invited him to come out today. He said, as I was kind of feeding it to him, when I could hear you, because I can hear you, I was like this. And I'm like, Michael, they're talking to you. He's like, oh, I'm meeting with them. They, you know. Um, so I said, well, come on out. So I invited him. I specifically invited him. Come and talk to folks. They're waiting. They're here to see you. Come and talk to them. <laughs> 60 plus K is not okay. It is disgraceful to see what this conservative government has done in the last five years. When they came into power, we were at about 23. We thought that was horrific. We couldn't believe how bad it was. And now we're over 60,000 kids. That's thousands of children in our school system who have never had a day of support. That is tens of thousands of kids who are struggling each and every day. We have kids who may never be able to reach a benchmark because they didn't get the services in time. We'll have families who will continue to care for these children as they grow. And where are they gonna live? Who's gonna take care of them when they're gone? Investing in kids early in life is clinically proven to make sense. Listen to the experts. What did he do to the experts? How many families, how many families can now not find a provider? They may have money in their pocket, they got nowhere to spend it. This is the reality, as you all know, of what's happening in this province of Ontario under the Doug Ford government. It's absolutely shameful. We need EAs in classrooms. We need services immediately. Doctors know when children are not meeting their benchmarks. Give them the services they need while you're working on a diagnosis. The Dons is a terrible way of assessment. How hard is that on all of you as parents? It is so terrible. And then to have to do it year after year to prove that there's still a problem. Come on, we can do better in this province. New Democrats have promised you time and time again for year after year. We are with you and we will make sure that your children get the services they need when they need them regardless of diagnosis. Sure, there are enough adults in the classroom, EAs in the classroom. And let's make sure we're taking care of those same workers so they're not burnt out and they stay with us. Let's pay them a living wage. Let's ensure that they're respected, respected to take care of the 
children who desperately need them the most while they're in the classroom. I'm going through the Rolodex in my head. I'm like, what else? Because every time I get down, I'm like, darn, I forgot to say. You know what's most important? I love you. I love you. I never forget you. I carry you with me each and every day. And I make sure that when there is something to say, that I include your families in my words, and in my thoughts, and in the work that I do. And of all the promises that I can make you, I think that has always been the most important one. You're worth it. Your kids are worth it. Everybody has an ability. We just have to unlock it and give them opportunity. Tomorrow, your team, your amazing team of executive members will be lobbying once again inside the doors of Queen's Park. And I can assure you, the folks who you have representing you on your executive do good work. They fight and give up everything to be here on behalf of so many families who cannot be. And we know just by the look of how many people are able to show up today that there are tens of thousands of people at home thanking you for being here, grateful for any opportunity and any voice that you could use on their behalf. So I want to say a huge thank you to Alina, Laura, Bruce. I mean, the team is huge. Past presidents, Angela, Tony. Uh, there are so many folks uh, who have worked so hard on this for decades and decades. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I said Laura. I didn't forget Laura. We're back. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. I totally appreciate it. Nico! Nico! Nico's probably have the most introductions in the Ontario legislature than anybody in history. The point is, is that so many people work so hard for our children. And I'm going to say our children because my granddaughter was diagnosed also. Right? And so I, I feel you. I, I'm with you. We, we live it too. And, um, but it's okay, because we're going to get through it. And we're going we're gonna to do what we need to do. But take me back. Thank you. Thank you to the executive past, present, decades of work. Decades and decades of work. I'm sorry that we ended up with a government that fell on deaf ears. But let's not forget. We get to vote again in 2026. And we only get to the place where we need to be, with the services we need to be, with a government that has constantly stood up for you. Stood up for kids with autism. I don't need to tell you who that is. But you know new Democrats have stood with you. And we will make sure to get it done. All right, I'm done. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Stay strong, keep fighting, we got this together. Without further ado, the Ontario Autism Coalition President, Alina Cameron. with a friendly MPP inside to hear to see if they heard us they heard us loud and clear today everyone good job <laughs> fellow advocates families education workers teachers therapists union leaders politicians thank you for gathering here today in front of Queen's Park to raise your voice in unison for our community your presence here is a testament to your unwavering commitment to making a difference in our lives, in our kids' lives. As president of the OAC, I stand before you today absolutely humbled by the incredible strength and resilience that defines our community. Your dedication and tireless efforts and your relentless advocacy continue to inspire everyone. You are the driving force behind our collective mission and you are the heart and soul of this movement. 
Today, we're confronted with a stark reality, one that should shock the conscience of every single person in Ontario. Sorry, I'm feeling a little enraged at the moment. According to the latest Freedom of Information request by the Canadian press, it is unconscionable that in Ontario in the year of 2023, there are over 60,000 kids waitlisted for critical therapy. This is a stain on our collective conscience and is a testament to the systemic failures that have persisted for far too long. It's also unconscionable that in Ontario, in 2023, special education is so egregiously underfunded that our children are being excluded from their fundamental right to an education. No student and educators, oh sorry, student and educators are alike are being put in unsafe conditions. None of this is acceptable. None of this is okay. What makes today special though, is that it goes beyond the gathering of our voices here, beyond the connections we'll forge today, and beyond the cathartic act of yelling at this building again. Today our community is regaining its voice. We're doing this today. You are regaining your power today. And you're bringing that power to the entirety of the Ontario Autism Coalition. Thank you. Collectively, we are powerful. And today, more than ever, we prove that. We're standing here united, holding the line of accountability that this government is trying so desperately to avoid. We're joining a chorus of voices rising up across this great province, saying in no uncertain terms, enough is enough. The families, the individuals, the educators, the therapists, and all those who care about the future of autism support in Ontario are joining hands to tell this government that we will not be silenced and we will not be ignored. Tomorrow, we take our cause inside the halls of Queen's Park. Tomorrow, we will continue the fight for justice, fairness and equality that every child and family deserve. We will stand shoulder to shoulder with politicians who share our vision and challenge those who fail to act. But remember this, our movement does not end when we disperse today, nor does it end tomorrow. It is a movement that gains momentum with each person who joins, with each pair of feet on the grass, with each voice that speaks out and each action that pushes for change. Our resolve is unwavering, our commitment is steadfast, and our voices will be heard. Tomorrow, we will ensure that no child goes without the support they need and no family is left behind. Thank you everyone for sharing your stories with the OAC. We gather that information, we look for themes, we come up with solutions, and we bring them to the politicians who are responsible for that policy. Thank you for sharing all of that very personal information with our working groups every single day. And finally, thank you for being here. Thank you for being the force of change, for standing up and for saying enough is enough. Let's continue our fight together. Let's create a brighter, more inclusive future for autistics, their families, and our entire community. Together, we're gonna fix this and we're gonna have a brighter future Ontario for our kids. Thank you everyone for being here today. Toby. Bon après-midi. I'm here with Stephanie Bowman, uh, the MPP from Don Valley West. I got it right. And I just, I want to thank you all uh, for being here and organizing this day. And I know we're going to have some meetings tomorrow. Uh, you've had a few speakers, so you don't need me to go on and on, but I could, if you like. Um, it is unjust and unfair and unreal that there are fewer children being served now than there were five years ago. Shame, shame on the government. So, addressing children's needs, anyone's needs, is not about issuing a press release or coming up with some idea that you think might work. 
It doesn't come from tearing down something that wasn't perfect, that needed work, and putting nothing in its place, or putting something not right in its place, and then having to change that. Because what ends up happening is, every six months is a long time in the life and the development of a small child. The government was wrong to do that. We're going to keep fighting and pushing for you. I know that for many of you, we don't understand and know the struggle. But just know that not just people in our party, but across the opposition are here to support you, here to fight for you, here to fight for your children, and to get some justice, and to get them the things they need so they can develop to the best of their potential. Thank you very much. Thanks for being here. And have a great afternoon. And we'll look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow afternoon. Thanks. We won't. I am of everybody that showed up here today and everybody that at home couldn't be here today. I get it. Um, this is just the beginning. We're going to make sure that everybody that works inside this building, no matter the political stripe, knows that we're still here and that we're not going anywhere and we're going to make sure this number shrinks. Okay, so everybody stay strong um, and let's do this. Monique Taylor. Thanks, uh, Tony, didn't I tell you I'd forget something I knew was going to happen? Something that is so important to so many families across this province is a bill for vulnerable missing people. Yeah. Bill 74 would be an alert just as an Amber Alert to ensure that the local geographical area knows that someone is missing. Now we know that this stems in this, in this community from the loss of Draven Graham. And so many communities in our, in our province face the same challenges. So instead of putting it down to just autism, we decided to do it for vulnerable people. People with dementia, people with Alzheimer's, people with developmental disabilities, this alert would help bring them home. We were able to table first reading and Draven's family uh, joined us here in Queens Park that day. And then we, just before uh, my second reading, the government pulled the bill off the table and didn't even allow me to read second. I've seen that once in the entire time that I've been here in 12 years, that they take a private member's bill away. And they took this bill away. And they stuffed it in the Justice Policy Committee, probably never see the light of day again. There are over 100,000 signatures on petitions across this province. So I need you to ramp that up a little too. Let's make sure that we get Bill 74 into committee, make the bill as strong as it right as it possibly can be, and make sure that we have an alert system that can be activated immediately when one of our kids go missing. So you can find all that information on, on my website. I'm sure all you have to do is look up missing persons on, on petitions online and you can find it and sign it and please share it so that we can ramp up the power, we can ramp up the voices and make sure that they are not able to ignore our voices when it comes to passing Bill 74, okay? So thanks so much uh, for allowing me the opportunity to come back up again. Okay, cheers. Our protest with a good chant. So it's gonna go like this. Who are we? And what do we want? Needs based therapy. Who are we? And what do we want? Needs based therapy. 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 Needs-based therapy! 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 Needs-based therapy!
tuned on the OAC page for upcoming events. We're going to keep this rolling. The province is going to hear us. And if, there, if you see any of the, um, the Doug Ford uh, has doubled the autism waitlist signs, you can take one. And there are washrooms, if you need to use a washroom before you go, right over here there's six porta potties there's one accessible one. Thank you very much everybody. And Miko would like everybody to subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll see many events like this on there. And I don't know if anybody's noticed, but there's been a billboard driving around the circle promoting us, okay? So I'd like to thank uh, Kiki for uh, supporting us with the sound and the awesome billboard. Toronto Education Workers 4400, they're the ones who supported us with the sound and that awesome billboard. There it is, check it out. One thing from Laura. Guys, it's just the teacher in me, I can't help it. Um, if you see some garbage on the ground, can you bring it towards one of the light poles? If there's chairs, if you can fold them up. If everybody does like one or two things, we'll be cleaned up in no time. Thanks so much for coming, everybody. Again, please subscribe to the OEC YouTube channel.